So a lot of people have touted me as a shill for Creality, and that is simply not the case. You see, a lot of the products that I've tested from Creality really have been fantastic for the price or for just overall what the product says that it's supposed to do. So that's why when the Spider Speedy Hot End came out, I was incredibly excited to get it in my hands. Now, this Hot End comes with the same incredible packaging that all of the other Spider Hot Ends came with, and all the other spider hot ends were just a load of garbage from everything that I read on the internet. But something about this beautiful hot end made me think that this was a change in a direction for Creality, especially seeing as the huge success of the recent products that they've launched. But I cannot say almost anything good about this hot end. Now let's get all of the good out of the way first. It has standard MK8 threading on the hot end. This way you can use a CHT nozzle or you know a diamondback nozzle, whatever you want. Uh, and it actually seems to produce 32 millimeters cubed per second flow rate, assuming you have a 0.8 nozzle. But that is where it ends. There is nothing else good about this hot end and I feel very bad saying that because I had high hopes for it and I put well over 40 hours of my personal time to make this work. Now let me walk you through the deal I made to get these shipped out to me. Per Gear reached out to me and asked if they could send me one of these for review and I said sure why not but here's the thing I'm working on getting my Ender 6 machines to be an engineering material enclosed printer setup and I'm going to be installing it on my Ender 6 so if you send me one you must send me two and that's the only way that I will accept this product. Pergear has been so ridiculously cooperative with me that they even shipped me a third hot end. Now what happened was after about 20 or 30 hours of one of these hot ends not working I thought I had a factory defect. That's because I installed the other one and it started to work. So I emailed them and I said that there was a factory defect and I asked per our original requirements, would you please send me another one so I have two working units? And here they go, they sent me another one. But quickly after I got this in the mail, I realized that it was not an issue with the hot ends that I received, rather, I think there's a whole entire slew of issues with the quality control of these hot ends through the factory line. And maybe my first two hot ends came in batch number one and they've had issues uh, that they've since corrected, but I have no idea. So anyway, I've put 40 or 50 hours of effort and labor into these hot ends and they just simply don't work, but I do have another one. I will be testing this even after I post the review. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this came from a batch further down the assembly line and maybe this one is functional. With Clipper, I am getting consistent, consistent, very repetitive, MCU disconnects. The clipper error I was getting was incredibly ambiguous and it really didn't mean much to me, but after some Google searching, it really seemed like there was a hardware issue that was causing these MCU disconnects. So what I did was I took my totally stock Ender 6 and I ported every single hardware component one by one over to the other Ender 6 that was no longer stock and I was still getting these MCU disconnects. To me, that was baffling because I thought there was no no way that this brand new hot end could be the issue. So that's when I swapped in the other new hot end and the disconnects suddenly disappeared, which made me think that the hot end was the issue. And this is a fantastic time to introduce the sponsor of today's video because this custom Spider V3 fan shroud was printed by PCBWay. Now I know you guys have heard of PCBWay before, but what you might not know is they have a 3D printing department as well. Now the great thing about PCBWay is they don't only print standard materials, you can also print peak, ASA, or even stainless steel and titanium. Now in order to provide the highest quality service prior to printing Printing, PCBWay is actually going to perform a full model analysis of the file you uploaded. That will ensure when your print arrives, it's going to be exactly as you envisioned it. What are you waiting for? If you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. For those that don't use Clipper and don't know what an MCU disconnect is, basically what happens is 
the entire printer shuts down. The power is still there, but Clipper has disconnected from the motherboard and any print that was happening was forcibly shut down. The connection between your Raspberry Pi and your, and your printer is done or between your printer and your Sonic Pad or whatever your Clipper host is, is completely severed. For me, the error happened anywhere from literally five seconds after I clicked the print button all the way to 45 minutes after I started a print. I was able to print full benchies and sometimes I couldn't even finish printing the purge line. I found a Reddit post that is on the screen right now and I also have a link in the description that shows other users having the same issue and other people having issues with this hot end. So after all of the many, many, many hours that I've put into this hot end, I can solidly, solidly say this is not an issue from the user standpoint. So when the hot end was not causing Clipper MCU disconnects, I simply couldn't get a beautiful print. And I found out that in April and May of 2023, there was a Cura 5.3 bug. They said revert back to Cura 5.2. I did that and I was finally able to get some prints that looked halfway decent. But the MCU disconnect issue is not a cure issue, it is a hot end issue and like I said, sometimes the hot end crashes in 5 seconds and sometimes it crashes clipper in 45 minutes. So if I cannot reliably print something that takes 45 minutes, which is a benchy, how on earth can I reliably print something that's going to take 15 hours? I just simply can't trust this thing to not cause an MCU disconnect within the first five minutes or maybe five minutes after I go to sleep. So after all of the testing that I did to do all of my debugging with a standard nozzle to a CHT nozzle to a Diamondback nozzle between 0.4 and 0.8 millimeter diameters, I was going and I had full intention of making beautiful charts to show what the actual true flow rate of this nozzle was going to be. This way you knew what to expect. Um, but you know, I printed some things at different flow rates to do all of the testing myself. Uh, and I just couldn't push myself to doing an actual true flow rate test because nothing prints successfully. Now, I seriously hate to say that because I love the direction that Creality is headed with their product line, their product quality, and I want to maintain a good relationship with Creality. But first and foremost, I am a content creator and I need to stay true to my viewers. Without you guys, I would be nothing. So Creality, hopefully you understand that there's issues with this and um, I'm sorry. <laughs>